Pride back out here live again. The Jefferson High School band, at least some of the band, on stage right now performing in anticipation of the mayor who has set to take the stage any minute now to give his State of the City address. Of course, we'll bring it to you live when it happens. When I first visited the lockdown Jefferson High School, it was the against the advice of many. When I first decided to get involved in school reform, I was told it was politically foolish. I have no authority over the schools. The bureaucracy is just too entrenched. The problem's just too big. And so they argued they weren't my problems. But I've been told my whole life that I can't or I shouldn't. The way, the way I, I see, see it, I was advised from, from adults, adults who stopped believing. While it is true, that I don't have any formal authority over our schools, I do have a bully pulpit, and I will continue to use it. <laughs> Six years later, with a school board committed to reform, with philanthropic partners like the Lundquist family, who understand that we're all stakeholders in our public schools, whether or not we have children in those schools. With nonprofit partners like City Year, who I see represented in big numbers today. <laughs> with charter partners like those who are gathered here today. With our civil rights and civic partners. With our school-based and family partners. We've made real progress. You see, school reform must come from the bottom up, not from the top down. Together, we passed the Public School Choice Initiative to bring proven leadership and accountability to our lowest performing schools and new campuses. By the end of this year, nearly 100 of the 700 schools in this district, including Jefferson High, will have been given the same chance of success. Together, we expanded teacher-led reforms. And together, we created the Partnership for Los Angeles Schools. The partnership took on 21 of LA's lowest performing schools in the most historically underserved neighborhoods. It now serves 18,000 students, more than Santa Monica Malibu and Beverly Hills Unified School Districts combined. Our partnership schools are proving that kids respond when you challenge them, regardless of where they come from. In two consecutive years, our partnerships, schools, have outpaced both the district and the state in student performance. But the mission isn't simply to serve our own. It's the pilot reforms that can be taken to scale across the district. And that's exactly what we've done. The partnership built a data system to track student success in real time. It's now used throughout the school district. The partnership created a simple tool based on a concept parents know and understand very well. It's called a report card. And now we have report cards for all of our schools. The partnership was instrumental in a legal victory that protects low-income school from the last hired, first fired policy that results in disproportionate layoffs. And so that you understand what we're talking. Yes. And so that you understand what I'm saying when I say disproportionate, in the rest of the district, they were losing about 3% of their teachers. In two of our schools, we were losing 50% of our teachers. Layoffs that create revolving doors of teachers an unstable learning environment for kids just don't work. At Roosevelt High School, the partnership has taken what was once called a dropout factory and transformed them into seven small schools, the largest small school conversion in California history. Together, we're turning a corner because we're believing in our schools again. Now, this is a pivotal moment for our schools and our city. Beginning Monday, 
We have a new leader in Superintendent John Dacey, a proven reformer, a former principal and superintendent whose dad worked as a short order cook to put his kids through school. Like his dad, he won't settle for anything less than high expectations for every child. He's ready to use data not only to hold teachers and schools accountable, but also the district and himself. I think of John as Bill Bratton with a ruler. Now the stars are aligning, but it's up to us to chart the way. New superintendent, newly elected school board, newly elected union leadership, the mayor's office. We have an opportunity to move forward in good faith, focusing on areas where we share common ground. Together, we're gonna have to confront a looming budget crisis. Let's show the public that we'll do more with the money we have so they'll give us more of the money we need. But first, let's make sure Sacramento finds a solution to the current budget crisis. A solution that honors a student's fundamental right to a quality education. A right that begins with keeping quality Absolutely honest with ourselves. California's 47th in per pupil spending in the entire nation. And this must change. We must restore funding so we aren't firing a single, not one, effective teacher let alone 20% of the teachers in the state's largest school district. In these tough economic times, we can't leave the work of transforming our schools to government alone. We need public-private partnerships. We need private investment. Let's build an LA fund for public education modeled on successful efforts in New York and Chicago. I've already talked to the superintendent about it. It's his idea. We're going to work together uh, to fund that fund. We'll use this fund to seed innovation, deliver on priority initiatives, such as restoring art and music and after-school programs. Because you see, reform is more than just reading, math, and test scores. It's about nurturing creativity and creating possibility. Let's get rid of the one-size-fits-all approach and make sure that every family has access to a variety of good choices. Let's turn the LAUSD into a network of independent locally controlled campuses. Today, well-off families already have a choice. Let's give all of LA's families those same choices. Let's open up enrollment outside traditional neighborhood boundaries, creating zones of choice. Let's help parents make informed choices by giving them the tools they need. We need a new school report card that makes apples to apples comparisons measuring progress and performance with a letter grade, just like student report cards. And let's protect and expand the use of the parent trigger to empower families to convert failing schools. But to fulfill the promise of more and better choice, we need strong leaders in every school. Let's create a leadership academy. Again, our superintendent and school board president are biting at the bit to get started to train and support the next generation of transformative school leaders, knowing 
that they are our most important agent for change. And finally, let's put teachers at the center of the reform movement. The teacher contract expires in June. With the stars aligned, we have to seize the opportunity. Let's negotiate a new contract that empowers teachers, parents, and principals at all schools. Let's stop dictating at the district level and let our local schools make the calls on budget, staffing, curriculum, schedule, and professional development. Let's recognize the pivotal role of teachers by supporting them with the resources they need. Compensate them for demonstrated effectiveness, not just years of service and course credits. You see, we need to create career pathways that reward our most effective teachers. We need to reform a broken tenure system and do away with a last fired first, last hired first fired seniority system. It's demoralizing to teachers and it doesn't serve our students. We need to, be, we need to create a multiple measure evaluation system. When more than 99% of district teachers receive the same satisfactory evaluation, it serves nobody. <laughs> Let's also do away with forced placement that don't work for students, teachers, or principals. Instead, let's adopt a system of mutual consent where teachers and principals agree on hiring and assignments. Now, this may seem like a fantasy, but the fact is we already use an empowerment contract, but only in a lucky subset of schools. Let's insist on a teacher's contract that's simple, flexible, and straightforward. One that streamlines work rules and empowers work sites. With a record number of pilot school applications, we know teachers want an agreement that a pilot contract affords and that innovation demands. Now, in closing, I'd like to say this directly to our teachers. I know that these proposals will raise some concern and spark controversy. I could hear some of the people outside. As a former union organizer, I understand your fear. I stood with you then, and I'll stand with you now. Change is never easy. It's hard to risk what you got when you've never had what you deserve. But as I've said many times, any serious effort to improve our schools begins and ends with you. Our time is now. The nation is watching. LA must take the lead. We can be the best in the West and the first in the nation. We can fulfill the promise of public education by agreeing with a new contract with ourselves. A promise to put aside the concerns of a few adults in the interest of children. We can do it if we remember what Thomas Jefferson said. To penetrate and dissipate the clouds of darkness, the general mind must be strengthened by education. At Thomas Jefferson High School, teachers and students are proving that we can dissolve even the most ominous clouds. And when those clouds part, we can see that the stars are clearly aligned. LA, this is your opportunity. This is our opportunity. Let's seize it together. Our kids are counting on us. Thank you.